family, welcome everyone! On this video, I'm in Nebraska and I visited two great places. First, I visited the Hastings Museum. Hastings is where Kool-Aid was created, and this museum has a big display on the history of Kool-Aid. Then I head west and end the video at Fort Cody Trading Post in North Platte. Gonna be a great afternoon in Nebraska. Let's go! Before entering the museum, I see this marker with some fast facts on the Kool-Aid man. He's six feet tall. I didn't know he had concrete footprints at the Grommage Chinese Theater in Hollywood. And here they are. Pretty cool. Making my way inside, can't wait to see the history of Kool-Aid. The museum has so much more than Kool-Aid history. Right now, I'm walking by displays of various places around this area of Nebraska, comparing a historical picture with a more recent picture. Looks like the same intersection in downtown Hastings in different time periods. Also nearby towns like Pauline, Holstein, and Roslyn. Need to see how the same place looked in different time periods. Look at the cross section of a big tree. Wow, this tree was a sapling in the year 1360. Then this takes us through historical events of the next six centuries. This must have been the oldest tree I've ever seen. There's also a small planetarium here. Let's take a look. Looks like just a small room with some posters and a few exhibits. Let's see what they have. These look like meteorite fragments. There's one from Holbrook, Arizona from 1912. Isn't Holbrook where the meteor crater is? There's another meteorite found in Colorado. Another couple of meteorites from Kansas. Look at this smaller square one from Mexico, and more pieces from not far from here. A stony iron meteorite from Brenham, Kansas. Look at this giant piece from Lushton, Nebraska. Bert Bassard found it when he was seven years old. Another meteorite from Mexico. This one gives some clues how the solar system was formed. This museum actually has several floors and each floor is divided into sections. This section appears to be different kinds of wildlife found in the United States. Looks like a family of polar bears are about to enjoy that seal. Daddy polar bear says don't touch my seal. There's a big buffalo right over here. And take a look at his cute little baby buffalo right there. It's so cute! I think these are mountain rams. My knowledge of the NFL Los Angeles Rams helped me to identify these animals. There's some deer getting a little snack from these trees next to a river. Nice scene. This kind of looks like a porcupine, also enjoying some leaves. There's some more deer by that same lake. Guess they aren't hungry? Some large varieties of mountain cats in this display. This bobcat is looking right at me. Like I'm his next lunch or something. 
Not to mention this mountain lion. He looks like he's thinking about doing something. That intense stare. Here's a family of foxes. Looks like they're having a good day playing in this field. The baby foxes are so cute. And this display are some different types of bears. Some are black bears and others look like grizzly bears. Pan over here, this bear looks pretty mad. This bear is very upset. Looks like one cub is not happy either and is being counted by the other cub. There are a few animals in this display. A family of bison sharing a field with some prairie dogs. And then over there, it looks like a couple of badgers or wolverines. Look at this herd of very large bison. These are massive animals, but take a look down there and trying not to get crushed is this teeny tiny little mouse. That's the only mouse here. Behind those bison is a family of pronghorn antelopes. Then up here, this looks like a big fox and then another mouse or something, some other small creature. Here's a display on the types of bats found in Nebraska. I never knew Nebraska had so many bats. Look at all these different types of birds that you'd find in Nebraska. Not just the birds, but their eggs as well. Down there, different types of frogs in Nebraska. This section are the displays for the different types of soils found in Nebraska. Also looks like it goes over different terrains in the state. Here are different types of rocks or silicates that are found here. In the background are different kinds of fish found in Nebraska, even more kinds of rocks over here. These look like fossils from animals in different periods in Nebraska's history. Here are some pieces of petrified wood, larger pieces down here. Here's one from the Petrified Forest in Arizona. And over there, many different butterflies and other winged creatures. Getting a closer look at the birds and their eggs again. These, I think, are actual birds, or maybe they look incredibly real. But either way, there was a lot of work put into the bird exhibit. This exhibit go goes on and on. Even some owls down here. Different types of those. That has his red belly, heads are red. Or pee wee. Even a lot of smaller birds are cataloged here. Okay, so the blue section are birds from Nebraska, the green section are other birds found in North America, like penguins, flamingos, and seagulls. Yeah, no seas in Nebraska. Now I found the Kool-Aid exhibit. It's called Kool-Aid. Discover the dream. This goes into how Kool-Aid was created and how it has become one of the most popular beverages in history. Edwin Perkins named this exhibit, and the picture was painted by Dave Racer. Stepping into D.M. Perkins' General Merchandise. In 1900, David Perkins traded his farm for this general store. It was here where his son Edwin got the inspiration to create Kool-Aid. Henley, Nebraska was settled in 1873 as a stop along the Burlington and Missouri Railroad. Perkins worked with warehouses in Hastings to supply goods for his store, like candy, food, cigars, and meat products. Cursing Grocery Supply would later distribute Kool-Aid. 
Now taking a look at the reproduction of Perkins General Store, it's starting with this mural of David Perkins and his store. Down here, some artifacts from when Perkins opened that store. Over here, a reproduction of what you might find in a store back in 1900. See the priceless over there, showing canned goods, clothing, produce, toys, even fresh eggs and cleaning supplies. Not sure if they actually took Kool-Aid money though. Here's a timeline of Edwin Perkins' life, starting with his marriage to Kitty Shoemaker. He was a postman. He worked with a new product called Jello. Down here it looks like what could have been his desk, as he was described as a workaholic. A sign over here asking, who was Edwin Perkins? Tells how family was important in Perkins' life. First is a grandson and son. He had a very competitive nature, playing on multiple sports teams. Then he was known as a loyal husband and a great father. Then later in life, he was described as a traveler, a good neighbor, and loved his five grandchildren. What was Perkins' favorite Kool-Aid flavor? Raspberry, which has been discontinued. One of Perkins' first successful products was called Nixotine. He said the ingredients in Nixotine would break the addiction to tobacco products. Perkins made a lot of money off of this, and it enabled him to move to a larger city. He wanted to move to California, but health and family considerations persu persuaded him to stay in Nebraska. Perkins sold many products through mail order and door to door. He branded these products under the name Honor Made. No one knows who or what Honor Made was. It was not based on any family member. One product under the Honor Made name was a liquid concentrate called Fruit Smack. You would add this concentrate to water and sugar and it would form a sweet beverage. He then devised a way to make fruit smack in powdered form. He called the powder Kool-Aid, A-D-E. These look like directions to create the Kool-Aid beverage. Over here, this looks like a poster to advertise Kool-Aid. Was there a Kool-Aid sherbet at one time? Here's some of the older packaging. Perkins used the packaging as another form of advertising. Kool-Aid had become so popular that Perkins moved to Chicago to better distribute this beverage. During the 1930s, Perkins lowered the price to 5 cents to increase business. He also changed the spelling from A-D-E to A-I-D. Kool-Aid had a lot of competition early on. Know how similar the names sounded. Over here is a bunch of promotional material for Kool-Aid to keep ahead of that competition. Some more promotional materials, and it looks like at some point there was Kool-Aid gum. Here's an old lemonade stand, now a Kool-Aid stand, two cents a glass. More ways that Perkins sold Kool-Aid. Special promotions like free balloons and beverage holders. Now going through the decades, all kinds of toys, clothing, containers, games, all sorts of products have solidified Kool-Aid as the leading flavored drink. Here's the Kool-Aid man. And all the logos over time that Kool-Aid used since the very beginning. The Kool-Aid man made, it, made his debut in a TV commercial in 1975.
More promotions, including a miniature circus tent and highlighting troops in World War II and joining Kool Aid. Kool Aid was sold to General Foods, who itself was sold to Kraft. Even more Kool Aid themed products, another Kool Aid stand here. Here are the six original flavors of Kool Aid. Kool Aid was also sold in pre made cans and pouches. There's that Kool Aid bubble gum I saw earlier, and it was also sold as a chewy candy strip. Behind me are two Kool Aid men from different eras. Oh, and they have that catchy jingle too. Look at this. Hastings has a festival called Kool Aid Days. This is really cool. It's held in mid August at a fairground here. Here's where you can vote for your favorite Kool Aid flavor lemon lime, strawberry, tropical punch, lemonade, grape, black cherry, and regular cherry. Which one is your favorite? Leave me a comment. That was a brand new museum. But before I leave Hastings, I wanted to check out where Kool-Aid powder was invented. In downtown Hastings, on the first street near Denver Avenue, this building is the birthplace of Kool-Aid. This building was renovated a few years ago. They don't manufacture Kool-Aid here anymore. But this is where Edwin Perkins developed the powdered form of Kool-Aid that remains popular to this day. The second floor windows have posters of Kool-Aid in New Year's from 1927 to present day. The first floor has a couple of large posters noting this was the birthplace of Kool-Aid. Unfortunately, we can't go inside. It's probably a different business now. But it's pretty neat to be where the popular drink was invented. Now continue my way westward through Nebraska. Actually, I'm backtracking and heading east as the sun's glare silhouetted the arch when we went westbound. And some, someone on the right is getting a special Nebraska souvenir. I'm in Kearney. And this big arch in front of me is called the Great Platte River Road Archway. I would love to go inside, but it's closed for the day not too long ago. Still, the structure is impressive going across the interstate. I'm still going to take a look outside. This really is a cool structure going across the thoroughfare. I really need to visit when it's open. Inside the archway describes the adventure of discovering this part of America as part of its westward expansion during the 19th century. Looks like a short maze over here is great for the kids that visit here. I like the entrance to the archway. It's part log cabin and part really nice stonework with the walls at slight angles, not straight down like normal. That aluminum horse sculpture up there, a nice touch which adds to the American Adventure theme for this attraction. This marker shows we are near the Lincoln Highway as it runs through Nebraska and describes how the Lincoln Highway began and also how the Boy Scouts helped commemorate the highway. Also the reproduction of the Hammer Motel sign here was from a classic hotel that was on the Lincoln Highway. There's a reproduction of the Hammer Motel sign and also a Lincoln Highway marker with the L. Over here is a reproduction of an old suspension bridge. This bridge begins the Great Plains Culture Learning Trail. Like I said, I would love to visit the inside someday. My final stop is in North Platte at the Fort Cody Trading Post. This is a very interesting place, just off Interstate 80 in western Nebraska. 
Fort Cody is named for Buffalo Bill Cody, who has a large sign here. The sign is a lot taller than the fort itself, I guess so it could be seen from the interstate. Buffalo Bill Cody was born in 1846 in Iowa and was a rider on the Pony Express. He was also called Buffalo Bill since he killed 4,280 buffalo in 8 months. Looks like he put North Plot on the map. Howdy, and welcome to Fort Cody Trading Post and Buffalo Bill's Wild West Show and Miniature. Hope you enjoy your stay here in North Flat, Buffalo Bill's hometown. And be sure to stop out and see us all. Just a 10 minute drive north of town. Friendly clerks here at Fort Cody will be happy to give you directions. I went inside the building, and there are many moving miniatures. These are reproductions of the Wild West Show he organized in, in, in the 1880s. By Virginia Ernest Lonsley, who find us in Old Pennsylvania. This is Lonsley, who Barber, in the original show as a job where he actually met Buffalo Bill. This inspired Ernie years later to construct this fascinating show. This machine is the most fast food in the entire The bull riding, half roping, and bronze riding were the start of all we now know as the sport of rodeo, which by the way originated right here at North Platte on July 4th, 1882. The celebration was put on by Buffalo Bill and his local cowboy. He called it the Old Glory Blowout, the first organized rodeo in America. And you're right. Also, the store sells gifts, shirts, souvenirs, and other knickknacks. Not only that, looks like they sell canned items such as jams, jellies, and sauces, some other stuff over here, and some snacks, candies, taffy, also some honey, chocolate bars, some popcorn, also lots of magnets for your fridge. Oh, and don't forget the shot glasses, snow blows, and plastic horses. Souvenirs galore. Now I'm behind the store. It looks like a kitschy rendition of what a fort in the, in the old way might look like. Right down to all the covered wagons. Quite a few covered wagons and some uncovered wagons too. Some picnic tables back here. I guess if you buy a snack or a drink in the store, you can take them out back here and relax here for a few minutes. Up on the right, a cowboy with a hole where his face used to be. Also a reconstruction of a cabin. I'm trying to get a peek inside the cabin through this fencing. I can't tell if this is a recreation or just some storage. I don't know. It's really hard to tell. Panning around to get a 360 degree view. Thankfully it's not very busy here today, so I can get a little filming quickly done. But I'm here to see this big guy, this Indian muffler man, towering over the fort. The owner bought this muffler man in 1970 for one hundred dollars from from a gas station across the street. He was moved to this post and then it was decorated as an Indian brave. They did a good job with the decoration and he's still pre in pretty good shape today. Come check him out if your travels take you to western Nebraska. They also did a good job bolting it to the ground, two heavy duty posts holding him up. Well, the sun is starting to set and I need to get some gas. In this part of the country, the familiar green dinosaurs from Sinclair are here. This one has a saddle and chaps on. That's pretty neat. 
Thanks, Sinclair Dinosaur, for becoming the petroleum I need to continue on my trip. And that's it for my visit to this part of Nebraska. Still a long way to go on this road trip, so stay tuned. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!